Welcome to lesson 26 in Hydraulics 102 and lesson 8 in the section on hydraulic motors. In this lesson we will be looking at the gear motor sizing in more detail and we will be calculating the theoretical torque of a gear motor. Now if you remember from when we talked about pumps, we said that on the inlet side of the pump uh, we have under pressure, we have vacuum. And on the outlet side, we have overpressure. Now with hydraulic motors, however, on the inlet side, we have an overpressure, P1, for example. And on the outlet side, we can also have an overpressure, P2. In this example, we hooked up another energy consumer in series with the motor. So for example, two motors. So you have P1 and P2. And P1 is an overpressure and P2 is also an overpressure, but it's a smaller pressure than P1 because a part of the pressure was consumed by the motor. So in the motor, there is a drop in pressure, which we can describe with this equation right here. The achieved pressure difference is equal to the pressure on the inlet side of the motor minus the pressure on the outlet side of the motor. Now we will derive the theoretical torque equation using the designations on this picture right here. Now first of all, all of these chambers, this is a chamber and it is made up of the sides of the teeth, the casing and the teeth base. So these are the chambers in which the fluid is trapped and transferred to the outlet side of the motor. So on the inlet side, we have the pressure P1 and the pressure P1 is used up to push these gears and the fluid that was pressurized comes to the other part, to the outlet part of the motor and it becomes pressure P2, which is smaller than P1. The action of this pressurized fluid that comes on the inlet side is what causes the hydraulic force in the radial direction, which is transferred to the output shaft. We can see that this gear right here is the gear that is solidly coupled with the output shaft. There is also a radial force that acts on the area of the casing, which closes the chamber in which the fluid travels. And when, when, when I say chamber, of course, I mean the space which the casing forms with the gear and that force leads to the strain of the casing of the motor. Now, tangential forces appear on the side areas of the furthermost teeth of the gear. So we can see this force F1 right here and this force F1 right here, okay. And they basically line out the sequence of the closed chambers on both the gears. And these forces are actually equal to the product of the belonging pressure and the projection of the area of the side of the tooth on the radial plane. So that, that would be the projection of the area right here, okay? And that projection of that area is closely equal to two times M times B. What is M? M is the module of the gear and B is the width of the gear. So it's, it's actually the third dimension that we cannot see here. So if, if, if you look at this gear from the side, you will see something like this, okay? So this is from the side and this is actually B, this is the width, okay? So if you wanna calculate the, the, the force that pushes this gear, so the force F1 would be force is equal to pressure times the area upon which the pressure acts. So we have P1 times this area. So this projection of, of the, uh, on the radial plane. So we have two times M times B. And this is how we calculate the force that is pushing the gears. Now, because we also have pressure right here on the outlet side, because we said the gear motors are linked in series, 
So we have two motors, for example, linked together. So we still have pressure here, okay? So we also have to find F2, the other force that is opposing this force from this side. And it's gonna be, of course, F2 is equal to P2, the pressure on the outlet side times the same area, okay? Two times M times B. Okay, so these two forces are important. Now, in order to calculate the, the, the exerted torque, we have to see, so we have, we have the, the force F1 right here. Let me change the color. So we have the force, okay? And it's pushing right here. And we have the diameter, DO, diameter of the gear. So if we wanna calculate the torque that's going to be generated at this point, we have to say that that torque is equal so T1 is equal to the force exerted, F1, times the distance from the pivot point. And the distance from this point over here to this point over here is actually the half of the gear diameter. So it's going to be DO divided by 2, okay? And if we take the, the force equation from earlier, so we say P1 times 2 times m times b times the diameter of the gear divided by 2. So this is going to be the torque that's going to be generated by this force F1. But we have a small problem. We also have a little bit of torque that's going to be opposing this torque T1 that we just wrote. So here we have F2 pushing and we have the same distance from the pivot point. So it's going to be T2 is going to be the same. Just instead of writing P1, we have P2 times the area times the half of the gear diameter. Okay. So this is torque two. Now, if, if, if we have to calculate the total torque, okay. So we have to take T1 that's that's the torque that is generated to, to push our our gears clockwise but we have to subtract the torque that is opposing so the torque that is is being produced by the force that is being generated from the pressure on the p2 side of course if for example there is no pressure here if this is a return line then we don't have T2 at all. So T2 is going to be zero. But again, we are doing an example where two motors are linked in series. So the total equation will be, so the total theoretical torque is equal to P1 times two times M times B times the half of the gear diameter minus P2 times 2 times M times B times the half of the diameter. Now, the equation for the specific flow of the motor is equal to 2 times the gear diameter times pi times M times B, okay? And we also know that the achieved pressure difference is equal to P1 minus P2. So if we do a little bit of arithmetic magic, we can say that the theoretical torque of the gear motor is the specific flow of the motor times the achieved pressure difference divided by 2 times pi. And for your homework, I want you to think about how we converted this big equation to this equation. A little hint, we added to this equation, we added pi divided by pi, okay? Because that's one, and if, 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 if I multiply this entire part by one, nothing's gonna change, and if I multiply this part with one, nothing is gonna change. So for your homework, I want you to analyze this a little bit.
So this, of course, is the equation for the theoretical torque of the hydraulic motor, of course, which has to be corrected with the hydromechanical efficiency factor in order to get the equation for the effective torque of the motor. So the effective torque of the motor is going to be equal to specific flow of the motor times the achieved pressure difference times the hydromechanical efficiency factor for the motor divided by 20 times pi. So you can see that we added the hydromechanical efficiency factor to the theoretical torque equation and we added 10 in the denominator because we want our units to be in Newton meters, okay? And this is it. This is the effective torque equation for gear motors. Just be careful when you're putting specific flow into the equation. It goes in in centimeters cubed per rotation and the achieved pressure difference goes in in bars. Now, if you remember the lesson uh, I put in the resource part, which uh, covered efficiency factors, the lesson from my other course, uh, if we want to get the effective torque value for the pump, all we need to do is relocate the efficiency factor in the denominator, okay? So the effective torque for pumps is going to be equal the specific flow of the pump times the achieved pressure difference divided by 20 times pi times the hydromechanical efficiency of the pump. So the efficiency factor is in the denominator because we need more torque because of losses. If you don't remember, I suggest you go back and download the lesson on the efficiency factors. Now, power. Uh, power that is going to be outputted on the shaft of the motor is calculated by taking the effective flow of the motor times the achieved pressure difference divided by 600 times the efficiency of the motor. And this power equation, when, when you put the flow in liters per minute, and when you put the achieved pressure difference in bars, what you get from this equation are kilowatts. Okay. This is it for gear motor sizing and for the hydraulic motors section. After this lesson, there is going to be a quiz, which will check your knowledge so you can see how much of info you picked up in this section. Thank you for listening and for staying focused and see you in our next section, which is going to cover the parameters of hydraulic motors.